Hello there. For those of you that don't know, my name is Jack McPherson, and I've been asked to talk about the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, and try to explain what the hell is going on in it. I have agreed to do this in exchange for a cut to the advertising revenue from this video, so do me a favor and share this one around. After all, it's Christmas, and the booze and the eggnog don't come for free. Right then. The Twelve Days of Christmas is a song which has been popular for centuries despite the fact that everyone hates it with very good reason. It tells the story of a person who, over the course of twelve days, receives an ungodly number of completely useless gifts from some Muppet who's trying way too hard to get in their pants. So on the first day, their true love gives them a partridge in a pear tree. Fine. Maybe they like birds. Or pears. Turn it up with a tree that's got a bird living in it for a gift is a bit presumptuous, unless they've already spoken about it. But as long as there's room in the yard, on the second day the true love turns up again with two turtle doves. Another useless gift, but that's not the issue. Here's where things take a turn. The true love also has another partridge in a pear tree. Because this is what's called a cumulative song, made in every new verse repeats the last verse, and then adds something to it. Which is what makes it so fucking annoying. And also what makes whoever's bringing these gifts such a bloody lunatic. Third day of Christmas, three French hens, plus two more turtle doves, plus another partridge in a pear tree. Is this a third partridge in a third pear tree? Or is the true love merely adding a new partridge to the original pear tree? The text is unclear on this point. On the fourth day, the new gift is four calling birds. But this lyric is the subject of some controversy to sad old Christmas nerds who've got nothing better to do with their time around the holidays than argue with each other over what the words are to one of the shittiest songs I've ever heard. Today, when school children are forced to sing this song, it's four calling birds. I mean, it's songbirds. Like a canary or whatever. But back two or three hundred years ago, when whichever bastard who wrote this song first made it up, they were saying collie birds, which was another way of saying blackbirds. As for my opinion on which version you should sing, I vote for neither. Just drink your eggnog and keep your bloody trap shut. Or pass it this way, if you don't want it. Fifth day, five golden rings. What the fuck happened to the birds? The true love turns up four days in a row with birds, and then on day five, it's golden rings. Perhaps you're thinking the rings are meant to give a break from all the birds. But if that's the case, why are there also four more calling birds, three more French hens, two more turtle doves, and another partridge in a pear tree? If you spend four days establishing a theme, even if it's demented, bloody stick to it! And five? So one ring for each finger? There's a thumb ring as well? Who wears a thumb ring? Just give brass knuckles for fuck's sake! Next day is six geese a laying. Back to the birds. So the five rings seem even more random and meaningless than they did the day before. Anyway, here's five more of those. Plus another round of four calling birds, three French heads, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Happy Christmas, darling. My gift to you is to turn you into an animal hoarder, whether you like it or not! Day seven. Seven swans are swimming. What's that then? They're swimming, so do they come with water? Does the house have a pool? Or at least a good-sized water feature in the back? Maybe they live near a river. Or in a chalet by a lake, the rich bastards! Day eight. Eight maids a milking. What the fuck is going on? After a week of assorted fowl and rings, now it's iron girls to help out round the farm? For Christmas? And why milkmaids? Why not someone to help look after all the bloody birds? On a side note, at this point the AI-generated illustrations start to look even wonkier than they have done already. Do yourself a favor and don't study the feet or the faces too closely. They're right nightmare fuel is what they are. Day 9, 9 ladies dancing. Strippers now as well. At last, a gift I wouldn't refuse on sight. I just hope they accepted tips in the form of golden rings, since I've had to spend every dime I had on winter upkeep for the dozens of birds I'm now responsible for! Tenth day, ten lords a-leaping, strippers now as well! Not sure what to do with this one, to be honest. What does it mean by lords? Landlords? Noblemen? 
married blokes? A lord can be many things, none of which I am inclined to kindness toward. And why are they leaping? It doesn't say they're dancing. That would be ordering in on the business of the ladies, wouldn't it? They're just leaping from spot to spot? In what way does that help anything? How is this even a gift? Who asks for this? Eleventh day, eleven pipers piping. Nice to finally think to hire some musicians since you've had dancing ladies on the premises for the past two days. Dancing apparently to nothing. At last, day twelve, which is twelve drummers drumming. Bloody wonderful. And another eleven pipers, don't forget. A pipe and drum band. Congratulations, your true love hired you a pipe and drum band for Christmas. Only they split it up to arrive across two days because they knew you'd want to write a horrid song about it and they wanted you to have options. If you add up all the presents given over all twelve days of the song, which takes about twelve days to sing as well, you get twelve partridges and pear trees, twenty-two turtle doves, 30 French hens, 36 calling or collie birds, 40 golden rings, 42 geese, 42 swans, 40 milkmaids. Oh yeah, I forgot, they're described as being constantly in the act of milking. So does that mean they came with cows as well? Is it 40 cows as well? Where the fuck are they gonna live? Let's leave that aside. 36 dancing ladies, 30 leaping lords, and 22 pipers and 12 drummers. In total, counting a partridge in a pear tree as a single gift each time it's given rather than two gifts, and not counting the 40 cows the milkmaids may or may not have come with, that's 364 gifts. If anyone tried this shit with me, they'd be dead by the end of day three. Look here, the last five days are wastes of time because it's just people who've been hired for temp jobs and not even useful ones. The day after the twelfth day, they're all gone, presumably. Unless the person singing the song decides to keep some of them on the payroll on a permanent basis because they just like having lords leaping around, the deranged fucker. As for the rest of it, all you can do is keep a few of the larger birds around to kill and eat, and sell the rest. Which is a lot more work for you, courtesy of your true love. Happy fucking holidays. Don't do this. If you want to ruin someone's life, there are easier and more effective ways of going about it. Take it from me. A can of petrol, a book of matches, and a bit of creative malice will accomplish more on that front than a gross of partridges, whether they each come with their own pear tree or not. If you want to give someone a lovely present, and you've got as much money and as little sense as the true love in this song, just work out how much buying or renting all 12 days worth of gifts would cost you and write a check for fuck's sake. Better yet, put it on one of those reloadable Visa cards. If you're sentimental, enclose a note. Something like, I almost bought you nearly 200 birds you didn't ask for, but I've given you the cash instead. Be around later for a ride if you're up for it. Merry Christmas. A wee bit of romance never hurt anyone, and it's a damn sight better than being forced to live out this song, which is one of the few fates I can imagine worse than having to listen to it. Twelve days of Christmas. Twelve verses of bloody torture is what it is. May you never again be forced to sing it or hear it. And may the blessings of the season be upon you.